It means basically a political stalemate. Uh, so it's not very different from the scenarios we had in anticipation of the vote. I think the only difference is that there are now tail risks which uh, could materialize around, uh, let's call them spurious coalitions, which the market is not necessarily pricing in. So I think this is why markets are a little bit nervous this morning. Let's talk about the spurious coalitions, to use your term then. Uh, can you explain? I'm guessing in that scenario, what you do mean is Five Star partnering up with Lega, but you can explain that to me. But more specifically, what do you think spreads can do in that scenario? How, how wide can we go? I, th I think there is there is an element of political uncertainty and there is an element of stability given from by the by the European Central Bank. So uh, I think that the Spurious coalition is really uh, coming from the game changer, which is the fact that the Lega Nord is uh, fetching more votes than uh, than uh, Forza Italia. So this is really where the balance of power shifts. I mean, it's not very likely to have a coalition between, for example, Lega Nord and the Five Star Movement. But uh, you know, it's a tail risk at the moment, uh, given the number of votes and the number of seats they are they are putting together. And BTP bond yields are about 140 basis points. Where do they go in that scenario? Just very quickly. Uh, I, I think we could easily go another 20, 25 basis points wider. Uh, then, of course, uh, you will have people trying to fade this movement, and perhaps you will also have comments from the central bank. Hey, Sanjo, let's talk about the banking sector as well. We have some of the Italian banking stocks are down 4 or 5 percent today. And of course, there's still very much a, a linkage between the banking sector and what fixed income is doing. But Overall, the banking sector in Europe has started to look a little bit better and the non-performing loans as a part of portfolio has started to come down. So uh, how do you think the banking sector actually evolves from here? Uh, we're on the right way to manage the nexus between sovereign and, and private sector, so the banking sector specifically. Uh, there have been some uh, local advances in Italy, for example, the introduction of the PIR, so the individual savings accounts, which in a sense are basically by -stepping, sidestepping the banking sector and providing some sort of capital market funding to small medium enterprises, uh, which I just recall are the backbone on the, of the industrial structure in Italy. So that's really positive. There's also an argument about deleveraging. As we know, um, there is a big hype now about uh, the non-performing loan sector. Deals are getting done. There is huge interest from outside investors. Pretty much the same kind of situation as uh, years back in Madrid, so the Spanish non-performing loan issue. So I think there are positives coming from Italy. Uh, of course, the political uncertainty is weighing uh, heavily right now as the banking sector is still tied with the sovereign. Still watching? Perfect. Click here to watch another great video from CNBC International. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.